Anchors up, sells at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. Um, you know, I, this is a decisive win. Decisive win for your Ohio State Buckeyes. Um, I think even the hateriest of haters, uh, of, of which we all know um, the hater hateriest of haters, all come from within the house. They, those are all uh, fellow Buckeye fans, the, the hardest of haters. Uh, and I think even they will. And, you know, I'm, and I'm not about to be handing out straight A's once we get to the report card. Don't get me wrong. But but I feel like even even there, I think we're in a place. I think it's going to be a good report card. I think is what I'm trying to say. And I, and I think that even if you're uh, a super hater. And like I said before, the most super, super reist of haters. I'll, try, I'll And I went in for a third attempt and I still couldn't get it um, come from within the Ohio State fan base. So let's. uh. Let's start wherever you want to start, Kyle. Where where would you like to start? Um, good question. <laughs> I guess let's 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 look at the positive here. Uh, Ohio State, Ohio State did really well when it came to uh, running the ball. They they ran it for yeah. what was the t- final here? 163 yards. They averaged 4.2 yards a carry. Mainly looking at the the three main running backs here, Hayden. Hayden X and uh and train them 6.9, 7.8, and 4.7 yards per carry, uh, respectfully for the uh three of them. So so the question is here did Ohio State fix what uh issues that Ohio State had with the running attack, or is it just because they were playing Purdue? Uh yeah, and that's not a that's not a question that we're going to have i as we're not going to answer that question by the end of this episode uh i think we'll have Maybe a better time underst- next week we'll have a better understanding after penn state <laughs> um yes they didn't fix the burn they just put makeup on their face maybe um and I think that what Ohio State at least started doing, they, they came out passing early. You know, you, you look at that first drive, it was mostly passes. And, and then they started getting some successful runs a little bit later in that drive. And then in the next drive, we'd almost feel like they, they sort of loosened up Penn State. They, they, they got them to like back up. You know, they got the defense a little bit loose. And then after that happened, is Penn State better than Notre Dame? I don't think so. Um, defensively, they might be. Um, and, you know, I think we're also just looking at the offensive line as a work in progress. And since Notre Dame, there's been a bye week, a Maryland game and a Purdue game. Penn State is more yeah, consistent we- than Notre Dame. I just, their defense is better. I think they have a better defense. And, and again, like, if we're looking at the offensive line and we're asking, because they looked very, very good in this game against Purdue. They looked very good in this game against Purdue. They didn't look perfect. And, like, when I say they they looked very good, I'm talking about very good based off of the low expectations that we had. Again, Purdue. Uh, is is what Zach says. Yeah, but they've they've looked like a bad offensive line against not great defensive lines on several occasions this year. We have Marv. We've always had Marv. Yeah, you're, you're talking about some of it was better drive. blocking s- schemes against Perdon. Hayden was quick to the hole uh, and is the best back with this O line. An interesting take. Um. Just give the ball to Marv. I mean, you know what we've gotten out of this season so far? Youngstown State is really good. <laughs> Youngstown State is a very good football team. All right. How are they doing? 
How's Young How's Young Town State so doing you, in so, the, on the FCS level? So you were talking about uh, earlier, Jared, that Ohio State's first drive they went past Happy, first first pass incomplete, incomplete, fifteen yards to to Marv, two yard rush by Trainum, thirty four yard pass to to Marv, four yard rush to to um, train him, then a pass, then a touchdown to to Mar for fourteen yards. So of the sixty nine yards on that uh, on that first nice. drive there, uh, so that would be sixty three. Sixty three of those yards went to Marv on uh, that by first the- drive. Uh, I asked how Youngstown State is doing. Austin said they have one other loss, just upset the number one seed in their conference. Then Austin says, oh, they lost again. Hey, you know, um, a a good offensive line can only take you so far. Yeah, back back, back to this game here. So a lot lot of us were worried about, oh, we're going back to Purdue here. Uh, thankfully yeah. it's not a night game here. Is, Very is Purdue going to have some sort of magic here? And I mean, that, that was quickly answered, uh, through the, through the early part or middle part of the second quarter there. Yeah. The, the weather was ugly there. And when you look at the stats there, uh, yeah, it Kyle McCord 16 for eight for 28, 276 yards, three touchdowns, which is, which is not bad. Not bad, but but in Not taking great. consideration how many how many drop balls Bingo. there were in that game, there were so many drop balls that really Kyle McCord should be like twenty two for twenty eight something something like that too. There there were so many there were so many drop balls. Now maybe you can blame it part on the weather, but these these are elite wide receivers that should be able to make these catches though. Yeah. yeah, Marv that's, had a that's lot of drops, which is uncharacteristic. I agree. That, that's the story of this. That's the story of this year with Marv. Like yeah. last year, we were we were talking about how many, how many you can count in one hand how how many drop passes he had all of last year, and this year, you have to, you have to use two hands now. It, he's he's had it's very uncharacteristic of him. X had one weird drop on the deep ball. That should have been a PI, in my opinion. The the defensive back had one of his arms, one arm, kind of. If we're thinking about the same play, uh, one of his yeah. arms, uh, like restricted, so he tried to one hand it. If we're thinking about the same play, uh, Fleming yeah, was, had a uh-huh. drop that was bad. I'll say it. Um, I'm not going to be kind to the wide receivers on the grade, despite uh, what was overall a good game you know, our expectations for them are high and therefore we will grade them strictly. Downfield blocking was good. Uh, yeah. I, but that, then that'll factor in. I think they had a good blocking game. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I think overall, I was really impressed with the offense here. Almost, almost broke the 500 yards for the game, 497 yards. Um, And, it, and by I the way, it should be noted that Ohio State packed it in pretty early offensively too. They they did they did. So if I'm looking at the, the first half here, let me let me get the let me get the comparison here by house here. So in the first half here, Ohio State Ohio State had two hundred and sixty nine yards, twenty twenty um points for the first half there. Only two penalties in the first half and was six for seven on third downs. Uh did did very, very well in that first half and then the second half as Jared was alluding to, they kind of took their uh, foot off the gas there. Not as efficient as the first half two for six on third downs in that second half. But again, I think a lot of it, Ohio state was just letting, Question. letting a lot of other play, letting a lot of other players uh, get the field here and right way risk injury. Question for you, Kyle. We mm-hmm. saw more Devin Brown in this game than we've seen since Kyle McCord was declared the starter. And we're not just mm-hmm. talking about junk time. And Devin Brown did also get some junk time snaps. But we saw Devin Brown get some, like, legitimate Meaningful snaps. Meaningful touches. Yeah. 
Now, my question for you is this. Are we going to see Devin Brown in short yardage plays from here on out? Is is that a a new wrinkle to the offense? Or was Ryan Day trying to throw some stuff on tape to screw with Penn State? There you go. I, th- I think it's that. I think, well, I think it's a little bit of both there. I think one, yeah, I think Ryan Day is just trying to throw more tape at Penn State so that they have to plan for more, think more things when Ohio State gets into the red zone. But also, too, that's Ohio State's kind of struggled in the red zone a little bit, trying to punch it in to get six points at, at times no, this year, short, too. So. Short yardage, period, has been an issue mm-hmm. for Ohio State the past couple of years. Uh, goal line or not, just any sort of short yardage has been has been bad. Uh, Kyle McCord even ran an option keeper. He did. He did. Um, you know, he got nine yards on that one. He dove like two yards before the first down marker. And so I saw some people were like, oh, two more yards, or you know, whatever, however, more yards. I'm like, nah, just get down, buddy. (laughs) Just (laughs) if you ever, if you ever want Ryan Day to let you run that play ever again, you just, you just get down without contact. That's that your job on that play is just to keep the other team honest and not get hit. Slide. I he, he, can I be honest with you? I don't know if I don't know if Kyle McCord can slide. I I am just saying, like I I've never seen it. He doesn't move fast enough. See, that's that's what I'm kind of thinking. <laughs> I think the dive might be the best. I think the dive might be the best option for him. I mean, it's still college football. It's still college football, and you're still the quarterback. You're protected the regardless. Big- the whole idea of the slide was an NFL thing because the slide says I'm down. But in college football, you're already down. You don't have to be tackled to the ground like the NFL. You can't if you go down, you can't get up. Why does anyone ever slide in college football? To me in this game here, I think the biggest takeaway was seeing Devin Brown come in and get meaningful snaps here. Uh, and he, he had a, he had a great throw as well uh, for, for that's Ennis's the, first, the, 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 the first Kenny catch Pickett and fake slide is now illegal. They, they let Kenny Pickett do that once. And then, then the yeah. refs said never again. Yep. But yeah, I'd be interested to see if, if Brown comes in for the Penn state game, if this were, if this is here to stay, uh, me personally, I I do not have an issue with that, as long as if it means six points on the board versus three, I'm I'm all I'm all for um, having Devin Brown come in. Uh, I mean, you know, as long as he holds onto the ball this time. Yeah, yeah. There's there's that part too. <laughs> yeah, there's that part. Is that Ohio State's only turnover on the day though? Uh, let's look. I'm doing comparison here. Uh, they 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 lost another fumble in the third. That's right. It was it was two fumbles. What's yep. the second fumble? I don't. What's the second fumble? Oh, uh, I'm. Why am I not remembering it? That was a great hit by the Boilermaker. Stover recovered it. No, this says fumbled loss. Stat sheet says lost fumble. Yep, two of them. Let's see, it was in the second half here. I'm trying to trying to look here while you talk about No, Devin Brown was in the here. second quarter. This one happened in the third quarter, apparently. McCord fumbled. That it was a strip McCord, sack. McCord, McCord was the sacked strip for sack. nine yards. Yep. Yeah. The, it was yeah. late in the third quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And that, that was the and that was the one where Purdue ended up getting their only points for the game. <laughs> Man, the the kicker for Purdue was not having a good game. No. No, he he wasn't. What what was he? Um 0 for 3 and then I don't think they tried again after the third one. Uh yeah. 48 Purdue. 39 and a 27 I, I yard. I don't want to get into it. I I don't feel like the right. the kicker right, was put into position to do well on several occasions. 
uh, but we don't need to get into. Let's let's talk about the let's talk about the defense here. Held held Purdue at two fifty seven yards here, three for seventeen on third downs. Huge. That that was huge here. That was one thing that Husty at times struggled trying to get off the field. They did that very well in this game here. Um, what was it? They ended up getting three sacks uh, for the game here. I think all three sacks were in that first half. By the way, to to the running back in nine to, ta- in nine tackle for losses, nine of them in this game. Uh, that's huge too. Of course, the, how many of those were sacks? Three. Was it only three sacks? Three sacks. All of them were in that first half. Yeah, I was about to get to that. Uh, actually, there. all of them were in the second quarter. <laughs> uh, to uh, to Mockaby, the Purdue running back. Uh, I I apologize. I was not familiar with your game. I really like him. Uh, I kind of don't want him to be on Purdue anymore so that he can go be on a good team. Like, I really like him. Uh, oh, Mockaby? Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, did, did you realize he had 110 rushing yards on the day? Um, the one bright spot in the offense. I like the one yes. bright spot in the office. Uh, uh I really, really like him. I hope he transfers somewhere else and makes a name for himself in college football because that's how the things work now, unfortunately or fortunately, depending upon your perspective on the matter. Did he play in Columbus in 21? I don't uh, I don't think so. Uh, he wasn't even on scholarship until this year. He's a walk on. Maccabee's a walk on. If y'all didn't stay late and see that segment. Hey, Jared, um, without lo- without looking. Who who had the most tackles for Ohio State in this game? Um, without looking, tackles. yes. Yeah, I'm not looking. Um, I'd almost want to say like either JT or Ty Leak. Like I feel like it was a lot of defensive line tackles. Uh, JT only had two tackles. No shit. <laughs> he only had he only had two tackles. Sawyer had three. Chambers had four. Cody Simon with eight tackles, as well as um, Tommy Eichenberg had eight tackles too. But I'm going to give the edge to Cody Simon because he had five solos versus versus Eichenberg had four. Yeah, Cody Simon played a lot, a lot in this game than he typically does. Yeah, um, I wonder... I wonder what the decision making is as far as like when he plays more versus when he doesn't play more um, as far as like matchups and all that goes. Uh, playing better against the run than any of that's the zombies. I think so, too. That's what I'm thinking, Woody. Um, uh, Gangland suggesting they may have just hot handed it because uh, it's still good. Did Steele have a bad couple drives? I didn't notice that. I'm not saying he didn't. I'm just saying I didn't notice. Simon needs to play on run, maybe. Um, I'm getting, yeah, no, um, you, I'm getting a lot. I'm about... getting a lot of uh, affirmatives on the idea that they they put Simon in because Steele didn't play well early. That's fair. Uh you're you're mentioning Ty Leak. Yeah, Ty Leak had a had a really good game as well. As a defensive lineman, he led the team in pass breakups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I feel like the defensive line in general had a really, really good game in this in this game. Um and it was is not a good is not a good Purdue, like with the exception of Mockaby. This was not a good Purdue team. Um, offensively, uh, Hudson Card one isn't isn't very good, but also two was not getting any help from his offensive line. And with all due respect to the offensive line, they came into the game down a tackle, and then I think they lost. Another, I think they lost their other tackle early in the game. Right guard, right guard. Was it right guard? 
but I, but they were down their left tackle coming into the game. They lost another offensive lineman early in the game. And then it was pretty late in the game, but then they lost a third offensive lineman. Now, again, that was late in the game. Um, but the point being is that it wasn't a very good offensive line to begin with. Then they were down a few guys and Ohio state's offensive or excuse me, Ohio state's defensive line took advantage of that. Uh, Ohio state uh, really, really took it to produce mash unit of an offensive line. Tylik is on par uh, to be first team all American. I, I think he's, he should be in consideration at the very least. Yep. Yep. Should have had one 69 to nothing. If they had wanted to, I think they could have. All right. Let's, let's give some grading here. Jared, unless there's anything else you, you wanted to talk about or mention in here. Um, we saw a quarterback sneak. We did. So, so that play is in the playbook. It is now. We 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 now we now know that it that it is in fact in there, and I don't know if we talked about Hayden enough. Um, in you know, in case of emergency, break glass, get Hayden. I mean, we'll grade the running backs, so we'll we'll get there, I'm sure. But yep. um, Trainum leaves the game with what uh, pretty obviously to me. I don't know if they've confirmed this or not. Had a concussion. Yeah, yeah, gang. I, you don't have to be a near doctor to know that was a concussion, gangland. <laughs> um, <laughs> the running back crew is very, very thin right now. Um, uh, hopefully, you know, I, I, I don't think we get train them back for next week. I think that's a I, I don't think that's a play again in seven days concussion. Uh, I, I think we'll, we'll be down train them next week with Henderson being a game time decision. You, you like, you'd like to think that that means that he comes back, um, that he comes back and that he'll be ready for Penn state. Since, like I said, he's a game time decision this week. Uh, we don't really know what's up with, uh, with chop. So, I don't know if he'll be back or not. Uh, the good news is, is that despite, you know, all the talks about the red shirt, Hayden still looked ready. And quite frankly, X looked good in relief as well. Yes, he did. Yeah, X looked really well. I think we've mentioned it when we were, when we were watching the game together. Uh, that X, that X, the way the X ran, he he ran with a, ran with a purpose he ran with some some speed behind them there just when he saw the hole he just went right right for it all right Kyle I got I got the chalkboard up I'm ready to hand out some grades coaching how you feel about the coaching this week I thought coaching was well they they didn't have to make changes at halftime <laughs> uh in order to fix any things that needed to fix here. So I think, I think, I think it, a, I, I can't really, there, there's not, there, there's not really anything overall that I'd say that either side of coaching did really bad on. So I can't, I can't, can't say anything bad. You were on the road in a, in a pretty mis miserable um, weather atmosphere here. Yeah, I think it, a, uh, I think Gangland sums it up pretty well. Tendency breakers and came out firing. Day was electric too. Yeah. Yeah, day was. <laughs> special teams. Uh, we'll, we'll worry about special teams. We'll get there. Uh, right. it, it says kicking on there, but we that's that's basically special teams. Quarterback. All right, Jared. The quarterback here. Now we have to do both quarterbacks. Yep. McCord, 16 for 28, 57%, 276, three touchdowns. And Devin Brown, one for two, one touchdown, 58 yards. <laughs> hey, you know, one and, completion. And, and, for and, both, and, both, and both quarterbacks with a lost fumble. 
Brandon Ennis with his first catch of the of his career. Yeah, but we're talking about quarterbacks first. Yeah, but it was Devin Brown's <laughs> one completion. It was, yes. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, uh, Devin Brown, uh, eight carries for 20 yards, uh, including the rushing touchdown, but also including the fumble. Yeah, let's, so, let's see. I, what do you think in chat? Gosh, it, it's tough because, I mean, you look at McCord and mentioned here, McCord 16 for 28, but a lot of those incompletions were dropped passes. You know, I'm, you know, I'm good. I'm going to say, I'll say a B plus. I, I got, I got to knock him for the lost fumbles there. Yeah. So I, I, I'll give him a B plus here. I think, I think McCord's throws are right where they needed to be. Uh, he still got another, he still has that tendency that maybe hold on to the ball longer than he needs to. And, ends up getting what is it like his seems like his third straight game of having a intentional grounding here. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, I'm going to go down to a B. Uh you can't be fumbling the ball. Uh Devin Brown Devin Brown doing what Devin Brown has has done what we've when we've seen him, he was at times spectacular and at times making you wonder what the hell he's doing. He had two passes. One of them was a 58 yard touchdown. The other one was thrown straight into the dirt. He ran for a touchdown and looked great. Uh, he also ran for a touchdown, except it wasn't a touchdown because he fumbled it. Uh, and Kyle McCord, I think is not spectacular yet, but I think he's doing exactly what the team needs him to do. Um, and as Kyle pointed out, his, his stats would look a lot better if Ohio State's wide receivers didn't drop so many damn balls. So I think a yep. straight B, I, I think, feels about right. Yep. All right. Running backs here. I think running backs, I will mention at the top of the show, Aiden, 6.9 yards per carry, X, 7.8, train him, 4.7. I I I would say like a B plus as well. I think I think the running backs did a really good job overall. I, I can't really say too too much negative about them, but uh, I I don't think I could give them an A though. But but I think I think a B plus. Kyle, I'm giving them an A plus. Um, you're down. I mean, when when did Trainum go out? I don't remember. First quarter, quarter second. It was it was either late first quarter or early second quarter. Uh, but you know, you spend the majority of your game without your top three running backs. And what does Ohio State do? They just keep going back to the cupboard. And if I'm gonna grade based off of the expectation of not having your top three running backs. You go down into running back four, five, six. You move one of your wide receivers to running back for the game. And you're still putting up yards. That that to me is the extra sort of effort that I think not just get you an A, but get you an A plus. Okay. All right. The offensive line here, Jared. <laughs> Hayden ran like, like he was pissed off. He's been on the bench. Yeah. <laughs> Offensive line, I think this is the first time I'm going to give them uh, first time all year, but I'm going to give them an A. I'm going to give the offensive line an A here. Uh, did a very, very good job when the game mattered here. Zero sacks here, and I'm looking here. Can't be zero and there's sacks. Zero sacks when the game mattered here. So in the first half, in okay. the first half, there was zero sacks, and then the first sack that was allowed – was in that third quarter when at the end of the third quarter when McCord got sacked and lost okay. the lost the fumble. Uh Woody brings up a good point that there was a number of penalties on the offensive line still. That's true. Um, you, you you can give mine an A minus then. I'll, I'll I'll knock him just a little bit for that. I'll say an A minus. I think an A minus that, that is very true. 
I think an A minus is very, very fair. Um, this is, I mean, and by the way, considering we gave him an F last week, yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a nice jump. That's a very nice jump for them. Chip came out with two thirty left in the first quarter. Wow! There you go. And tight end. What, 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 how can I give anything less than an A plus for the tight ends here? I agree. It, it is officially, non-jokingly, non-ironically, the year of the tight end. Like, jokes aside, meme, no meme, no joke, no ha-ha, no rah-rah. Well, okay, maybe a little bit of rah-rah. We it is here, the year Jared. of the tight end. In October. It is, it is October, Jared. Yeah. And a tight end caught two touchdowns in a single game. We've seen we've seen it in September. We've seen tight ends get t- multiple touchdowns in a game. We've seen that, but in October, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, All in right, a what? game in which the run blocking looked good, you also have to talk about the tight ends uh, in in that respect as well. Mm-hmm. All right, wide receivers. This is going to maybe sound silly. I mean, maybe it's not. We've talked a lot about I mean, Marvin Harrison Jr. goes over 100 yards again, uh, gets a touchdown. Um, that being said, the next wide, the next leading receiver is a tight end, is Stover. Then your next two leading wide receivers after that are two freshmen who came in the game late. Fleming had a bad drop. Marvin had a bad drop. Maybe a couple bad drops. Um, where, where, where are the wide receivers at in this game? And like, I know Mecca doesn't play. Um, Xavier had one catch. Fleming had one catch. If you take away the freshman, and you take away Marv, and hell, where, what, what, what? What position was Xavier playing when he caught the ball? Was he a running back or wide receiver when he made that catch? I honestly don't remember. I don't remember. (laughs) I don't remember that catch. Because if you take that catch away, then there's only one catch by the wide receivers outside the freshman and outside of Marv. Freshman wideouts get an AAA++++. Yeah, no, that's what I said. Fleming had one. That's the only wide receiver catch, not by a freshman and not by Marv. Unless, of course, Xavier was playing wide receiver when he caught that ball, in which case there were two. They ran the same play. Well, there you go. It was the very first or I'm sorry, it was the second second play in the second half there. Um. Well, that doesn't, unfortunately, tell us what position he was playing. Um, I don't know. It, so, it's it's yeah, I'm, I'm going to guess it's running back here based on the play here. The ball was at the 42. He caught it at the 42 yard line and then ran it for 21 yards. So he caught it right at the line of scrimmage. That tends to indicate he was playing running back, but not necessarily, but could be, but tends to indicate it. Um yeah. Either way, I'm, I'm giving I'm giving the wide receivers a C. I think a C uh, is is fair enough because there were, there were plenty of plays where the the wide receivers blocked very well down down the field there, and Absolutely. I was really I was really um, really impressed and still proud of the way that uh, that Brian Hartline coaches these receivers and how well that they can block down the field here. Even even with Fleming not being able, struggling to make catches here, he's still an excellent run blocker. Yes, T is fair. T a C is fair, but Tate and Ennis were awesome. See, that's the thing. I all I was very tempted. I'm giving him a B minus. I was very tempted to like go after the wide receivers here, but 
one, they blocked really well. And two, the freshman wide receivers are still part of the wide receiver group. I can't just, I, cause, and, and I said it several times, if you take away the receptions by the way, well, you can't take away the receptions by the freshman wide receivers. They were playing too. And Marv had a bad game by Marv standards, but a bad game by Marv standards is still 105 catches and a touchdown. So I, as much as I kind of want to rip them for all the drop passes, the freshmen still played well. Marv only had a bad game by Marv standards and Fleming may not have been great at catching the ball, but he and the entire wide receiving core blocked well. Um, yep. Like I said, I really wanted to go after him and like give him a real bad grade here, but I'm going to do a B minus. Right. Defensive line. Did I say 105 catches? 105 yards. It's, it's interesting. So Marv had six catches, 105 yards, four catches and 63 yards of that was on the first drive. Yeah. Just just an interesting stat there. All right, defensive line here. I'm giving them an A. I'll give them an A. I thought the defensive line played very well. Tyleek is still a monster. Yeah, defensive line A. I'm going to go A plus, Kyle. Um, All right. I, I think they got a lot of pressure. Uh, but I... I how many of the tackles for a loss were produced by the, you said there was a ton of defensive tackle or a, a ton of tackles for a loss. Sawyer had yep, one and yep. a half. JT had one and a half. Um, McDonald had a half of a tackle for a loss. Malone had half a tackle for a loss. Yep. Simon and Eichenberg each had one. Well, we're talking defensive line for now, but oh, yeah. defensive line. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Sawyer had a sack and a half in this game. JT had a sack and a half in this game. Um, yeah, uh, Sawyer had a really nice rip move on the solo sack he had. Um, was it a hand swipe? Was, was the rip move on the shared sack? I might be conflating the two um yeah the yeah, shirt sack I, was, with so it was with uh was with uh was with uh yeah JT. no i just i i had just said that he had got the single sack on a rip move but right when i said it okay gangland said it was uh with a hand swipe and i was just thinking i may have swapped this around okay got it all right uh, moving on to the linebackers I thought linebackers did did okay. I thought they did okay. The the reason I I am not giving them in like an A in this one is that you you look at you look at what Purdue was able to do on the ground there. Uh, mainly their main running back, eighteen attempts, one hundred ten yards, six over six yards of carry there. It, that tells me that the that the linebackers weren't filling those holes enough there. Well, it wasn't. A, some of it was a garbage time, but there's quite a bit of that that was in legit time too. So I'm, I'm going to give the linebackers a, a B plus there. Um, rushing yards. Purdue had 30 of their rushing yards in the first quarter, 43 of their rushing yards in the second quarter. Um, they had basically no rush yards in the third quarter, but then had 41 in the fourth quarter. So they had more of their rushing yards in the first half than the second half. Uh, Steel was lost. Ike and Simon looked good. C feels tough. Um, okay. High expectations. I don't know. I mean, I thought, I thought Simon and Eichenberg had a good game Ooh, and, and yeah, I understand. I and I understand that like maybe the other linebackers didn't and I'm not trying to angle for an A plus here or anything like that. But, you know, one of your linebackers is having a bad game. You took him out. You put in your backup linebacker who had a great game. And exactly. 
And and that's why I think I think a B plus is is fair. It's a linebacker driven defense. No, it, it is a safety driven Ooh. defense. That is at yes. least what our defensive coordinator says. Yeah, what, what grade are you giving linebackers? Uh, I'm going to go with a, just a straight B. Um, could have been better, okay. but I thought Simon came in and covered up for a lot of the shortcomings of, of the other linebackers. Mm, fair enough. Uh, what's your grade? It was a B plus. All right. The corners here. I thought the corners played very well. Uh, <laughs> produced passing 13, excuse me, 14 for 35, 134 yards. I, I thought the corners played very, very well here. I, Igbenosin, yes, Igbenosin is coming into his own. Yeah, he was beginning the season, it was very iffy and wasn't sure about him being that corner too, but I, I, I don't like you saying he's root. He's Everyone really keeps saying along. that. I don't agree. Uh, no, he, he. I, I understand that he didn't look um like. He had some like penalty issues early, um, but I don't know. I just, I, I feel like the whole he didn't start well thing, is exaggerated. That's all. Well, I'll, I'll give I'll give the corners an A. And and you might as well give the uh, the safeties an A as well too for me. I thought they did very well. Okay. Um. What are you giving them, Jared? I agree. Safeties with an A. Uh, I don't feel like going A plus, and that's not a. Um, a negative on them. It's just that I feel like the defensive line uh, w was making such a mess of things that it made the defensive backs, especially the cornerbacks jobs very easy. Um, and, you know, didn't necessarily cause any big turnovers or anything this game. Uh, so, you know, it, it, we need to keep those a pluses back. Um, and, I, and I think most of that can be said about the safeties as well. Kicking. I'll say this about the kicking. At least we're not Purdue. Mr. Mr. Very first extra point of the season here. Yeah. So here's the thing I saw. We were watching this game as the social screen this week. Because Peacock, I, I need to remember to cancel my Peacock account. We're watching. We're watching this game as the social screen. Uh, I can say it now because it's not advertising. If I'd advertise, if I'd have said we were doing it before we did it, then it would have been me advertising that we were doing it, which would have been illegal. I can say it now. Anyway, the point I the point I was saying is Ohio State misses their extra point. I go to Kyle. I go, well, we have to give the kicking an F now. He, he wasn't here to hear it. The, so it's just like, we have to give him an F now. You can't miss an extra point. But. But then Marco. But Marco then, Marco, but Marco that, that, really then well. Marco just planted the ball on the one yard line on a punt. You know what's funny? We're watching again. We're watching this game live. So they're on the they have the ball in their own 40. And there was like, are they going to go for it? Are they going to go for it? And then they sent out the punt crew. And I was just like, oh, man, you're going to send out the punt crew. And then then they got like a five yard penalty. And I was like, oh, great. Now I got a five year penalty. I go, no, 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 it's fine. It's just giving them extra room to kick. This is a good thing. And you then the second one. And then there was a second <laughs> five yard penalty. I go, guys, that one was on purpose, too. It's fine. Like, they're literally doing this on purpose. It's 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 fine. He needs a little extra room to kick. They're now at the 50. This is an ideal place to kick from. This is exactly where you want to be kicking from. Then he planted it on the five yard line and everyone just had to bow down to me. Because I was right. 
because I was right. Esquire, I'm not going to go back uh, down over it. I'm sorry. I'm uh, just not going to do it. I'll say a C. Yeah, he's got to to meet in the middle. It's all, you know, it's almost like, hey, you know what, Kyle, I'm going to cheat. Can I cheat? I'm going to go A. No. Um, Stop it, Jared. Then I'm going to put a D. Stop it, Jared. And I'm going to do the kicking and the punting separately. How about that? Kyle says no, so he's just going to do a straight. He's he's going to stick to the rules and just do a straight C. I'm sticking to the rules. Punt coverage wasn't cover, the best. Kick coverage was great. <laughs> Did, <laughs> didn't we kick one out of <laughs> bounds? <laughs> yeah, one of them was, yes. It was late in the game, though. Really urban that one up. All right, Kyle. Um, uh, there, there's our uh, report Buckeyes. card. That is our Buckeyes. report card. Let's do our Buckeye leaves offense here. I'm going to give mine to X. I'm giving mine to X here. He led the team in all purpose yards with 109 yards in the game here. I'm going that to makes give mine a, to X. That makes a lot of sense. I'll give mine to Hayden um, for obvious reasons. In case of mm-hmm. emergency, break glass, pull out Hayden. Chat, who's your offensive uh, sticker going to? Uh, I got a couple of Stovers there. So uh, we, we got, got, yeah. We got Stover. We there. got three Stovers. All, All right. right. Defensively, All right. where are you going? Defensively. I'm, I'm going to go with Simon. I'm going to go with Simon here. He comes in here. He playing, playing, got more snaps than he typically does here. And he played, played really well. Mentioned that he led the team, tied the team in tackles, led the team in solo tackles. He had a tackle for loss in there. Yeah, I thought Simon had a really good game. Uh, it looks like the chat wants Ty Leak. Um, I will go with uh, Sawyer. Um gets one and a half sacks in this game looked like a menace a lot of the time so i'm gonna go sawyer all right and and your wild card who do you just who do you want to give one to what's what's Uh, another player that you would like the purdue kicker no i'm (laughs) kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding that's a joke that's a joke i'm not i'm not really giving it to the purdue kicker um, you know, I, I really wanted to go X here. Uh, you stole my answer a bit, giving it to him on the offensive side. So, um, I'm going to try, I'll go somewhere else and, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Devin Brown. Devin Brown. Okay. You got two Not, touchdowns, two you know, touchdowns for the game there. Gets two touchdowns, came in out of nowhere, underdog story. We thought we weren't going to see him for the rest of the year, and then boom, here he comes back in trying to save the short yardage play. You know, and everyone would be like, Jared, he fumbled, Jared, he fumbled. He got, he got the helmet, the dude got the helmet right on the ball. That's, that's just, that's football. That shit's going to happen sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you make chat, next chat time stole, he doesn't got to go hero ball on it and he yeah, doesn't chat have to stole, make the dive. Chet stole my pick. They, 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 they decided to go on Ennis here for theirs. So, you know, you know, what I'm going to give mine to. I'm going to give mine to coach day. I'm going to give mine to coach day here. Came in okay. and uh, play. He had a really good game plan. Start off really well here. Score could have been 48, 49, points if if um didn't have that fumble right at the right at the goal line there but day i thought day coached a really well rounded game here and i love the energy i see from him these past few games he's i know that was one of the things you you heard of from from other other people talking about day about him just not being that energetic and he's just just there on the sidelines and he's really shown a sign just a lot of just 
enthusiasm there, and he really let it, let the players know that if they if they effed up, he, he let them know. <laughs> yeah, he he. Re- I remember one drive in particular. I think it was the I think it was the same drive that they punted on, if I'm remembering correctly, but I might not be. Um, by the way, we we really don't still need to be on the record report card page. Um, the right, sorry. He he ripped into Josh Simmons for a was it a holding call on that play? Um, and then it was yeah, it was a hold. Gangland is yeah. oh yeah, that's the one where he straight up tackled the dude. Um, and on that same drive, I it, it you know to make sure he spread it around before he was yelling at Josh Simmons, he is ripping in the Cal McCord on I, I assume blaming him for the. Cause they also had a delay, delay game, game on that drive. Uh, it really just killed the drive and he, he ripped them both coming off the sideline. Uh, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of day coming, a lot of energy coming from day right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think, uh, I saw somebody said here, <laughs> uh, Tate would have been another good name here to choose. Tate had himself a, uh, best game as a, in his young career at Ohio State, three catches, seventy nine yards, in that in uh, in this game here, it definitely could have been a an option as well too. All right, do we have any ask Sloopcast to take us out on? Uh no, don't have any here. But that is okay because I think I think this is a I think is a good place to to wrap it up here though. I want mine answered from earlier. Did you put it in the Ask Sloopcast channel? If you didn't put it in the Ask Sloopcast channel, then you're just then you're just screwing over Kyle's ability to see it. What is Dave's beef I don't know with what prior? <laughs> oh, I gotta follow. I gotta follow the. I gotta follow links now. Um, how many more years until Heartline uh, is take taken taking taken somewhere as oh taken somewhere as an HC? Um, I don't I don't think he's gonna, to be honest. Uh, he's spoken on this a couple times in the past, um, and he says he just wants to coach at Ohio State. Uh, he says he's just. Happy to coach at Ohio State. I mean, he's got some I, I he has some local. I think both in I don't know, I think he's got some. Small companies or something that he owns in the Cleveland and Columbus area. Um, I, He's got NFL money in his pockets already. I. It's easy to say that until they offer you for million a year they're not going to offer uh someone who's never been a head coach before to be a four million dollar head coach yeah um he isn't even the oc just got a raise and a title change to do the same job uh that's no he is the oc now he might be a co oc but he's he's an oc and he is calling plays. I mean, I'm sure he's calling plays at day's direction, but he is calling plays. I mean, they, they, they both call play. Like there's not, it's not a single person that calls plays is, is the point. Um, I want everyone to come to the discord server, come hang out. maybe, Maybe, maybe even, you know, we can talk about the Patreon. $3 a month, you can watch games with us. You actually can watch games with us without paying $3 a month, but you can talk to us during the games for $3 a month. Um, come tell Jared to go fuck himself. Yeah, for $3 a month, you can tell me to go fuck myself. Um, you can also just do that in YouTube comments, quite frankly. Although, when people do it in the Discord, it's it feels like ah, you funny. But when they do it in the YouTube comments, it feels mean. So maybe don't. But yeah, come hang out in the Discord server, and if you're having fun in the Discord server, at that point maybe throw us three dollars a month. 
or more. You can you can you can do more if you want to. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, yeah, we had a surprise boom um, during the game here, and that is a four star. Uh, Four-star kid for the 2025 class, uh, Maryland quarterback Blake Woodby. Uh, it was a little, little surprise to to see him um, commit here, but he he put a commitment video and said that he was born two months early, but I was right on. But I was right on time. Uh, born and ready. Now I'm ready to share my commitment to the Ohio State. Probably a late night SSX ne- SSS next week. Uh, some fun games to watch with us. Uh, taking a peek uh-huh. ahead at the schedule, Austin's already calling uh, a night game social screen next week. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's the end of today's show. Um, Kyle, we can talk about the schedule on that. We always do that on the on the Tuesday episode. Come, uh, make sure to join us on the Tuesday episode. We'll look at the national scope. Uh, so, uh, with all, uh, uh, music, uh, tonight's ending music is a band, uh, from, I believe they're from the Cleveland area called signals Midwest. Uh, so that will be tonight's episode or tonight's music for today's episode signals Midwest. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, signals Midwest. <laughs>